Okay, picking up where I left off, I'm continuing to uh, work on these uh, inner uh, back quarter panel panels. I don't know what you call them, door cards on a two-door. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you how this turned out as far as it's covered um, with the vinyl. And now these are uh, the studs that come through, and they're held on with a small flat aluminum washer. Uh, and also a little nylon nylock um, 1024 nut here. I'll cut these off here flush and I'll cover them over with some rubber tape so that this is the area that the belt wants to go up and down and this is the passenger belt coming up through here so I don't want these things to make any kind of uh, you know damage the belt. So I have to cover them with something in order to make sure that they don't uh, they're not sharp against the belt. Anyway <clears throat> Just thought I'd show you how that all comes together uh, with those uh, blind studs going through the panel. I just thought I'd show you this. Um, I took some of this, um, it's like a fiberglass batting uh, that's inside for sound deadening on these panels. And I used both a combination of contact cement and some hot glue to stick this down over top of those uh, cutoff uh, bolts. So that they don't have any, uh, after I, they look kind of look like that, they're all sanded down and smooth, but just the same, the belt passes in this area here. So what I've gone ahead also and done is I've got this uh, really sticky rubber uh, waterproof tape that I put over top of the, the fiberglass. So the, the belt is running on a slick area. Uh, so just uh, triple layer of protection, so to speak. All right, before I set this back in the car, I just thought I'd, uh, and before I cut this other one up, I thought I'd just uh, show you what it looks like side by side as far as how much the upper portion had to be modified down, you know, where the tower ended up and all that good stuff. So anyway, that's a good side by side comparison of those two things. All right, so there's the panel just Temporarily put back in. Ended up just using uh, uh, two black screws here to secure that to keep it from pulling away from the car. It's only held in right now with uh, one of those little push buttons, those plastic push uh, pins right there, and those two screws. And also, I've got it held down with this screw that goes through a spacer block down into the sill, and then this one over here. Um, but anyway, that's uh, the only thing holding it right now. There are two clips that go in that hold this to the steel. They go into those two slots like that. But uh, I took those steel clips off because it's nearly impossible to see what's going on back there. Um, and also, uh, I don't want to keep wrenching the panel out because you really got to tug on it to pull that away. So I just took the clips off for now. And that will be a final installation. Put the clips on and for the last time the panels go back in. Anyway, this is... Um, it's worked out good um, to where the belt's running on the metal and not running on the panel itself. Um, the surround worked okay. I had to put some sheet metal around here to make this a little bit more gradual. It was a bit of a pain uh, trying to get this all tucked in here and around here, but it worked out in the end. Um, so uh, I did build a small little tower here to kind of reconcile where the belt comes out and goes to the uh, headliner corner over here. I'll have to still make a uh, decorative cover for that uh, uh, piece up there. At any rate, this will all be upholstered, so this will all come together pretty neatly, hopefully. And uh, then uh, I have to build a corner cap over here and figure out what's going to go on with that whenever I get to that uh, package tray situation. Anyway, and the bolt basically just fits down through this slot, bolts to the car at the base here. And that's the way that's going to look right there. But, um, yeah, that's it. And uh, now i got to uh, get to work over here and do the same thing. All right, and in the past, I've been in a big hurry to toss all the scrap metal out, get everything out of my way, you know, just as a matter of keeping everything organized but uh, I've learned that uh, shouldn't throw anything away too quickly till the job is done at least um, 
this is a perfect example of that. I like to mount any sensors or wiring back to the original spots that they were uh, mounted in. And um, in order to uh, do this body mend, I had cut most of this away, knowing that I would have a pocket for the glass and everything. So uh, when it came time, which is now, to start putting the wiring back uh, to the inside of the door here, um, I wanted to mount this uh, sensor here in the proper attitude and location where it came away. Unfortunately, uh, out in my scrap pile, I still had the piece that I trimmed out here that has the um, the proper location, you know, relative to this original manufactured spot. And now, of course, uh, it would have really been inconvenient to try and uh, mount this uh, inner window with this in the way. But you can see there's a there's a small hole here, and then there's a welded nut on the back side to secure that. So, um, and uh, I know it's uh, things can get cluttered up after a while, but uh, at least if you throw everything into a remote junk pile, you can always go back to that pile and see if you can find something that you might need like this. All right, so this is the driver's side done as far as the steel work is concerned. Um, at any rate, it's time to uh, take this all back apart and body work it and upholster it. Um, I went ahead and I'm starting to uh, loop the wiring back in over top of the uh, package tray here in uh, preparation for making the package tray. I got to see what all the interferences are. So I went ahead and um, I've got the um, these wires all mounted back for the, the final time actually. There's no reason for that to, to come out. Um, this was a little funky uh, piece that had to be mount, mounted at an angle. I'd match the angle that it, it came off the car. I don't know why it's up at an angle. Um, who knows what that is. But anyway, um, looping the wires up and over, and down and in. Got the speaker in the one side over here. Got a real rat's nest going over here. Some of this is for the roof. Uh, so that, that door panel's gonna have to come back off. Um, and this wire is all going to have to get looped up there, speaker put in, and all that good jazz. So that's what's going on now. Just thought I'd show you the type of glue that I'm using for this um, upholstery work. Um, it's basically uh, a solvent-based uh, contact adhesive. The good thing about it is, is if you have one of these old pot-type uh, spray guns, um, this is a real cheap one. Uh, you could leave the glue in there for almost ever without cleaning the gun out because it has a, such a strong solvent it re-wets itself inside the the gun when you just have to clear the nozzle out when you uh, start working with it again and uh, the main thing is, is to uh, not load it up in any area in other words you don't want to trap any solvents underneath the skin because like I said the solvents are so strong that they can, uh, once you cover it with vinyl, if there's like a bubble where it's not really dry underneath um, and it skins over, what will happen is those solvents will re-wet the glue and it'll, it'll uh, pull off. So, got that coated right now. Give it about five, ten minutes to dry. We got the um, uh, vinyl over here also done up. The main thing with the vinyl is to, it'll soak in a little bit, so you've got to kind of let it, a, a first layer get uh, tacked up a little bit and then go back over it with kind of a spider webbed thing so that the glue sits a little bit up on top of the fabric and it's not so soaked in because you want it to the the uh this rubbery glue to grab the rubbery component that's on the other piece now spraying the metal is not too bad because basically it's going to sit up on top of the metal not to soak in to start with so anyway i thought i'd show you that All right, now that it's stuck uh, to the face and worked all into everything on the face, I'll go around and I'll glue up the edges and pull them. But one of the tips uh, I'd like to leave you with is, is, you know, you're going to do something like this, get a pack of about 100 disposable razor blades. The first sign that the razor blade goes a little dull, it's tugging on the fabric, toss it, get another one. Don't try to save razor blades on something like that, you'll ruin the project. Um, they'll go dull pretty quickly, cutting this, even cutting this fabric. 
So as soon as it starts to fight you a little bit, it should just go through like silk. That way you can control all your cuts as far as your trim uh, is concerned. So just a little tip there. Use it or don't. All right, another thing I wanted to show you when you're trimming this stuff out, you got inside curves like this and you want to uh, try to make relief cuts, but don't make them within an eighth of an inch of the actual place where it's going to fold over. The material will give enough. You don't want that cut to be showing on the face side. So you want to have enough material left over for it to wrap over and have that relief cut well on the back side. Same with these corners here. You see I've left about an eighth of an inch. So when I fold this over into this corner here and here, the fabric also will pinch around the corner rather than showing that uh, raw corner of the fabric on, on the face side. Anyway, a little trimming tip there. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, last of the interior panels as far as the doors are concerned is done. What's left on the interior, of course, is the uh, headliner, which has to be upholstered. But that's uh, going to come out uh, once I disassemble the uh, the car and get it ready to do, uh, do the Bondo work. So that's quite a bit down the road. For now, I'm going to leave it in place. And um, also, we have to select the fabric for that. It's going to match these gray inserts here. We'll have whatever alternative fabric is going to be chosen for that uh, so, uh, got to wait for that also. Um, moving on to the uh, package tray. Uh, as you can see, I showed you yesterday, which uh, uh, I started to put these modules and stuff in, and uh, I have to put the rest of the wiring up there to see what's going to interfere with the package tray, and uh, then I'll get around to doing that. Um, that's the project for next week. Um, this is all I have time for this week. And I appreciate everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.